Okay, yeah, let me know if something we'll, funny happens. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, keep monitoring. Okay, let's maybe start. So, um, everyone, welcome to the first lecture. Yif and Wang will talk uh, to us about aspects of superconformal field theories in 40, 50, and 60. And I'd like to reiterate that everyone should ask questions through whatever means you have available to yourself. You can unmute yourself, you can chat, you can also raise your hand, uh, anything goes. And really, everyone should ask whatever question they think is super you know, puzzling them. So thanks very much, Yifan. Thank you, Sakura. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, putting together this wonderful school and also giving me the opportunity to, uh, to give these lectures. Uh, so as Sakura mentioned, uh, uh, this is a lecture, so you are welcome to ask questions at any point. Uh, I'll try to check the chat window, um, but you, you, you can also feel, just feel free to speak up. So I'll be talking about uh, various as aspects of, uh, of superconformal field theories in four, five, and six dimensions. As you can see, this is a vast uh, uh, set of topics. So let me start by making some uh, making uh, some general comments and then giving you a big picture uh, before I tell you more specifically what I'm going to cover in these lectures. So here are some general comments about superconformal field theories. First of all, just by studying the superconformal algebras, you can see that uh, the superconformal field theories can interacting examples of superconformal field theories can exist in d equal to two, three, four, five, up to six dimensions. And uh, this is uh, some old results due to now. Um, in the 70s and more recently reviewed and refined in the paper, nice paper from um, Clay, uh, Thomas, and uh, Ken um, in uh, 20, 2016. Uh, this is super conformal field theories, as, 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 as what's true also for general conformal field theories, are universality class of quantum field theories in general. And this is, these are very important because uh, such universality class are very uh, rare in higher dimensions higher than four space-time dimensions. And so the supersymmetric examples are the only interacting examples that we know of that have uh, this conformal invariance and while being uh, interacting and unitary. And uh, as we'll see, the superconformal field theories generally do not have a Lagrangian description. There's no tunable parameters in this theory. And this can be uh, analyzed systematically using uh, this, uh, um, uh, using the operator data uh, at the, the fixed point following the superconformal representation theory as, as it was explained in this paper and also a previous paper from the same authors. And there's a, despite this uh, constraint coming from supersymmetry, there turns out to be a huge zoo of uh, this superconformal field theories in all these different dimensions. And in general, there's no classification of such superconformal field theories, except for very special cases such as uh, the case of 14 to 4, where there's a post proposed classification just by uh, 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 the, the simple Lie groups, um, which label the gauge group of the theory, and also a uh, uh, proposed classification in 60 uh, that's labeled by ADE, the, the simple list uh, Lie algebras. Okay. Uh, I should say that this, uh, the, the, the proofs for this the full classification is also not watertight. Uh, they may subject to additional discrete uh, labeling, uh, which will be interesting to figure them out. And this under investigation by various groups uh, in, the, in the recent years. Yeah. Mostly focused on the 4D case, but uh, it will also be interesting to study uh, corresponding discrete uh, extra data labeling the 60 theories. And uh, despite this huge zoo of theories, there are many relations. There are various organization principles between these theories. Uh, one example of such relation is the compactification. Namely, if you start from a higher dimensional superconformal field theory and you compact the theory on, on a compact Riemann surface or a circle or, I mean, or a higher dimensional uh, manifold, generally you can get a, a, a superconformal field theory in the lower dimension if such compactification preserves supersymmetry. And this gave rise to some relation between these superconformal field theories and also there are non-trivial relations between these uh, theories in this huge zoo by RG flows in the same dimension. Okay. So what is the general philosophy that uh, people have been taking in studying this uh, super helpful field theories? So here is some uh, big picture that you may, you may want to keep in mind. 
So there, there are several aspects or of super compound field theory that uh, we will focus on. One is the, the fixed point itself. So uh, this uh, super compound field theory uh, by itself has some algebraic definition in terms of some operator spectrum, some uh, the correlation function of the operators, uh, namely the OPE and OP coefficients, um, as well as various deformations uh, that's coming from uh, classifying um, basically the operator spectrum and seeing which operators have, uh, have descendants that preserve the supersymmetry and so on. And there's another uh, description of this uh, theory, not at a fixed point, but uh, via non-trivial RG flow. And that in that description, the description is based on some effective theory. Okay. And many, uh, many aspects of the fixed point is visible from the effective theory or manifest in the effective theory through some spectrum of particles, such as the BPS states. And some correlation functions in a fixed point would manifest itself through the effective action of the effective theory. And the various features like deformations of the super component field theory will be related to the moduli space of the, uh, of the EFT. And uh, separately, there's also a geometric description of many of the super component field theories, thanks to constructions of this fixed point through string theory or M theory constructions. And this geometric, uh, uh, in this geometric uh, description, many aspects of the CFT are geometrized uh, through uh, objects like brains or fluxes or uh, supersymmetric cycles inside uh, this uh, uh, geometry that engineer the super component field theory. And there's also a close interplay between the EFT and the, the clavial, uh, sorry, and the geometry uh, uh, in the sense that the, the EFT captures many dynamics of this uh, brains. Uh, in the ambient, uh, in the geometry that engineer the superconformal field theory, and depending on which de description you use for the superconformal field theory, there are different techniques that apply to probe the dynamics of the fixed points, uh, such as the protected operator spectrum, uh, which applies, uh, which can be either uh, uh, extracted from the EFT description or from the superconformal field theory as uh, fixed point description using some bootstrap method. Uh, there's also the, the holographic method that uh, uh, Fabio talked about, um, uh, which can be useful either from the geometry description or from the, uh, from the fixed point description by applying the ABS CFT correspondence. There's also like things like a supersymmetric pattern function, which can be computed using localization using some effective theory approach, uh, sorry, effective theory description. Uh, because typically you need to Lagrangian to do such computations, which is not which is not available unless you are in this EFT space. There are also things that are such as anomalies, which can be uh, extracted from either of the descriptions. So from the EFT uh, description, typically it comes from some anomaly matching uh, on on the module space, and from the geometry it can can come from some anomaly inflow. And from a CFT perspective, sometimes this can be bootstrap, uh, can be extracted from the couple bootstrap problem. Okay. So there is a proposed classification for sixty-one comma zero STFT as well. Uh, that's right. So so uh, so so of course there are classification. So there are partial classification for all different cases. Uh, indeed, for sixty-one comma zero, there's a very large theories that have been classified from F theory construction. But uh, I'm not. I'm saying it's not a. I'm not saying. Uh, sorry. sorry. Uh, here, by by, uh, I want to emphasize the complete classification. So I, I don't know to what extent that is a complete classification. It's the same extent as like two comma zero. I think is there something? Extra? Oh, two comma zero. You can prove it uh, using field theory techniques, right? You compare the file on S one. There's a uh, not complete rigorous, but it's a strong argument says that. Uh, the 5D description is described by super Yamils with AD gauge groups, just by looking at the spectrum of multiple strings. This is discussed in some paper from, uh, I guess, Clay, Thomas, and Xi Ying. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that uh, circle compactifications of some other 2,0 theories is, uh, is some unknown 5D theory. Uh, well, there's some argument in that description because uh, the 5D theory has to be free on the module space. And if it's free, it has to be described by n to two vector multiplets, I and see. that so constraint. That. I see. That's okay. right. That's right. I yeah. See. So, so one comma zero. I would say that the F theory constructions are classified. Yes, but uh, for example, uh, I don't know if people can rule out the, uh, you know, a one comma zero theory without a tensor branch. 
So that's that's by what I mean. It's not a complete classification yet. Yeah. So in, in sixteen superchargers, can you rule out theories without a ten, two comma zero tensor branch? Yeah. So from this from their argument, yes. So you have the free theory, but it's, it still has a one dimensional tensor branch. So I, I thought you in you are using the existence of Coulomb branch there as well, right? To constrain the theory, there should be a, a vector multiplet in five dimensions. Uh, uh, the, that is true. Yeah, that that is true. That is true. Yeah. So 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 then I I don't I I don't know to what extent if that argument rules out this uh, uh, theory without a tensor branch. Okay. Thank you. But it's uh, it's less likely in that case. I would say. The existence of such example. It's a good question. Okay, uh, let me continue. So this is, uh, as I've shown you, is a, this is like a vast landscape of topics uh, which concerning super conform field theories in, uh, I mean, our world. Uh, so of course we'll have a limited number, a limited amount of time. So we'll focus on some specific, specific things here. So the goal here of these lectures is to uh, illustrate how these two aspects of CFD, memory uh, FAP field theory approach and uh, construction from geometry can be used to construct and study dynamics of superconform field theories. And to make this illustration more concrete, we'll focus on the particular case of 14 group two, where many results are available. And we'll also discuss in relation to uh, the, the 14 group two theory in relation to 62 comma zero theory, which is relevant for the class S construction, and also type 2B geometry, which is relevant for the type 2B constructions of such 14 group two superconform field theories. And after that, uh, we'll uh, give an overview of uh, applying similar logics, uh, namely from EFT and geometry, to construct and study dynamics of superconform field theories in five and six dimensions. We'll not repeat most of the steps uh, explicitly, but we'll outline the, we'll point out the major differences when going beyond four dimensions. Some of the things that Fabio already mentioned, uh, for example, the gauge theory becomes non renormalizable in the, uh, beyond four dimensions. And also we'll mention their F theory and M theory constructions. And finally, uh, I would like to give some uh, sampling of uh, uh, a few of the very many recent uh, field, theory, field theoretic progresses in, in understanding this, um, this uh, CFDs. Okay. Um, all right, so, so that's, the, that's the goal here. Um, so for, for the first lecture, uh, we'll, we'll focus on according to two. And uh, this approach will be, this, this, this entire lecture will be a uh, few theoretic. So we'll talk about some basics of 14 2 theories uh, based on Lagrangians. And we'll talk about super conform field theories, which you can construct uh, uh, using the Ingrid 2 Lagrangians. And then we'll move on to discussions about uh, the effective field theory associated with general 14 2 super conform field theories in IR and how. Uh, how one can recover or di discover uh, superconform field theories by analyzing the the um, the IR effective theory, which is described by the separation theory essentially. And there are many useful uh, pri previous uh, references, uh, lecture uh, pedagogical references on these topics. I just want to point out two uh, particular examples, which I uh, two particular references that I find it useful. One is like I think by now is one of the canonical references for to learn about Fortinet two. This nice lecture notes from uh, UG, and there's also a recent uh, uh, recent uh, lecture notes from uh, uh, Mario Matani, and uh, discuss uh, various ex uh, various aspects of the separate theory, um, and pretty pedagogical for rank one cases. Okay, and there will be some overlaps uh, in my lecture with this uh, lecture notes. So you find you're not getting uh, cut loose from this important question. So Ali Schaefer is asking. Um, oh, there's can a question. You say what Sorry. sort of discrete extra data goes into classification of 40 n equals 4 and 62 comma 0 series? This Maybe we can discuss it the, towards the end of the lecture. We can. So, yeah. but I think this is an important point. So let's not forget yes. it. Uh, uh, oh, there, okay, there are many questions. There were mostly me responding that we should have oh, okay. these questions. Which I, think is. I see. Uh, uh, is it okay, Ali? Is it okay if we discuss towards the end? 
Yeah, yeah, yes, for sure. Yeah, there will be there will be more uh, open questions, so we can okay. discuss it together. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to give everyone a background on what we're talking about here, and before we go into the more uh, detailed discussions. Okay. So we'll be very concrete uh, in this lecture, and uh, hopefully this will be reviewed for most of you. Uh, but if, if not, uh, let me know and I'll clarify various points uh, if needed. Okay, so we'll start by uh, uh, reviewing the superconformal algebra that's preserved by a 40 into 2 superconformal field theory. Um, the superconformal symmetry of a 40 into 2 superconformal theory, field theory is, uh, uh, is SU 2 comma 2 slash 2. It contains the bosonic uh, conformal group SO 4 comma 2, as well as SU 2 R symmetry times U1 R symmetry. Okay. And there are various uh, Lagrangians, which is related to 40 and 2 superconformal field theories. They're related in different ways. One way is coming from some UV Lagrangian description, namely when, the, when there's a conformal Lagrangian, um, namely some conformal gauge theory that describes the superconformal field theory. In that case, the, the, the gauge coupling is going to be a marginal parameter of the Lagrangian. Okay? And it corresponds to a subspace, parameter of the subspace of a conformal manifold of the superconformal fixed point. And another context uh, some uh, Lagrangian shows up is some UV Lagrangian shows up is uh, some asymptotically free gauge theory in, uh, in 14 to two context. In this cases, it can be related to the superconformal fixed point via a non-trivial RG flow, okay? This 14 to two Lagrangian also shows up in the IR context when you study uh, superconformal field theories in four dimensions. This shows up as the effective description of the uh, of the um, uh, of the low energy physics uh, of the superconformal field theory upon relevant deformations. Okay, and this relevant deformation could come from um, could come from uh, turning on some relevant operator, but also come from uh, 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 giving a vet to some protected operators. What's required is for this process to preserve into two supersymmetry. So that you can use some uh, into two supersymmetric effect, effective theory description. So to, to describe this, uh, uh, either the UV or IR Lagrangians with according to two supersymmetry, we need to introduce the supermultiplets. Uh, well, before we talk about the multiplets, we we need to set the notation straight for the into two supersymmetry. The there there are uh, there are two uh, supercharges uh, which transform under the space time. Uh, space-time rotation symmetry, uh, spin four, where alpha and alpha, alpha dots are the uh, chiral and anti-chiral spinner indices. And there is also the SC2R symmetry under which the supercharges transform as a doublet. Okay. And these two supercharges Q and Q twiddle, uh, apart from setting apart by their uh, space-time rotation uh, symmetries, they also set apart by their uh, U1R charges. One has U1R charge plus one half, and the other has U1R charge minus half. Uh, this may differ from uh, some uh, some some uh, some some uh, some uh, papers you've seen in the literature where the superchargers have plus minus one charges, but it's something just you have to keep track of. The supersymmetry algebra is very simple. Uh, if you if you take the anti commutator of uh, Q and Q twiddle, you get the translation. But what's more interesting is if you take the anti commutator of Q and it was Q itself for the conjugate, which is the commutator of Q-tudo and Q-tudo. In that case, uh, there's a central extension of this uh, anti-commutation relation, which, is, which, which we'll, I'll call Z. Okay? This central extension will play an important role in the description of the effective theory of affording the two superconformal field theory in IR. Okay. Here, uh, okay, the, there's a typo. Uh, in this normalization, uh, just because the, um, just because the Q themselves uh, carry U1R charge a half, uh, this central charge uh, will carry uh, U1R charge one, okay? and this will be important. Okay, so the with two supersymmetry, uh, the the fields in the in the in the Lagrangian that respect this symmetry would organize into supermultiplets. So there are two kinds of multiplets which are that are relevant here. One is a vector multiplet. The vector multiplet has as its uh, bottom component uh, a scalar phi, 
this bottom component is annihilated by half of the super, super symmetries, and it's usually called a chiral multiplet uh, of this particular weight, uh, U1R charge equal to one. And it has it's, as a super supersymmetric descendants, uh, uh, Gigino, and also the field strength. Okay. So once again, this I little i index uh, represented the uh, SU two R symmetry uh, doublet, and this alpha prime is space time uh, anti chiral spinner index. Uh, there's also the hypermultiplet, which uh, involves uh, as a bottom component uh, a scalar, a complex scalar. Sorry. Uh, a doublet of complex scalars. So there are four scalars. Uh, you can forget about the, the capital A indices for, for now. These are flavor indices uh, which are which are important if you introduce a uh, many of these hypermultiplets. If you just have one hypermultiple, you can suppress the A index. And the bottom com component, as I said, is a doublet of, um, uh, it's a SU2 doublet of uh, uh, scalars, which transform as follows on the SU2R. Uh, importantly, you have to take the conjugate. And its super symmetric descendants are uh, are some um, uh, uh, wall fermions which uh, transform uh, under some SU, ex, some extra uh, SU two symmetry, uh, uh, which which can be made manifest if you split the hyper into two half hypers. Okay, and this hypermultiplets also the bottom column also satisfy a, a shortening condition of a different type than the chiral case. So there's a systematic and efficient way to construct 42 Lagrangians uh, using this uh, uh, this super multiplets, uh, thanks to the superspace formalism of uh, 42 one. So in that formalism, uh, you can you can represent uh, uh, 42 one Gigino. Uh, you can represent the 42 one vector multiplet as the Gigino superfield, and you can also represent the 42 one Cairo multiplet as the Cairo superfield. And the anchor two multiplets, uh, because how it splits under the 40 into one subalgebra, can be represented by a combination of a Gigino superfield and the Cairo superfield associated with this uh, scalar phi. And similarly, the 40 into two hypermultiplets can be represented by two 40 into one Cairo superfields associated with the scalar Q. Uh, this contains the scalar Q, and this contains the scalar Q total. And just as you as you may have remembered uh, from, well, okay, I, I assume that you have some exposure to forty into one supersymmetry. Um, the general forty into one Lagrangians are constructed by uh, a, a, a super potential for chiral superfields and the killer potential that may involve coupling between the chiral superfields to uh, to real vector superfields, which I denote by v here. Because I should say that this. Uh, this Gigino superfield is related to the real vector uh, superfield by taking some uh, uh, super covariant derivatives. Okay. These are things you can learn from uh, the classic book of Wes and Becker. Okay, so let's start with the Lagrangian, uh, the basic Lagrangian for pointing the two uh, theories, namely the, uh, the Lagrangian associated with the input two vector multiplet, because the vector multiplet uh, splits into a Gigino superfield. And uh, and the chiral superfield, okay. Uh, there 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 are two terms you can write. Um, one one term you can write is this uh, uh, this uh, uh, superponential type term, which is essentially the into one uh, super Yamil's action in the super space description. And another term you can write is the killer potential, okay. uh, which uh, describes the covariant couplings between uh, phi and the gauge field, the real gauge field, the gauge superfield of you. And because of the extra anchor two supersymmetry, and in particular the SU two R symmetry, uh, this coefficient, which which is a priori undetermined in the by the pointing to one supersymmetry, is determined by the coefficient tau here to take this specific form. Okay. So this is a general feature that happens with pointing to two. The the pointing to one killer potential and super potential will be tied up together by the extra uh, SU two R symmetry. So you can you can you can look at you can carry out the same analysis for uh, for uh, the anchor two action that couples matter to the gauge fields. Once again, uh, there's a killer potential term. Okay. 
and this is super potential term. And the coefficients are again fixed by SU2R symmetry. Okay, so there's no pre uh, parameter so far in this description apart from uh, this uh, this tau, which is uh, which is a complex five page coupling. Okay, so 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 this way you can construct the most general uh, for the two Lagrangians that involve uh, vector multiplets and hypermultiplets. And we uh, one one very concrete thing you can you can study using this Lagrangian is the modulus phase of vacuum. Okay, so suppose we have, we start with a general into two Lagrangian, which takes the form of uh, Lagrangian for into two uh, vector multiplets and into two metric multiplets. The modulus space can be uh, figured out by studying the the uh, zero locus of the potential, uh, which I'll call V. Okay. The V, uh, this potential, scalar potential, receives contribution from so-called D terms and also F terms. And they are very explicit in this Lagrangian description, which you can write down. The D term takes the following form. It involves uh, the, the, uh, the scalar in the inter vector multiplet as well as the, the scalars in the hypermultiplet. And the F term relation uh, uh, also can be figured out by a similar computation. Okay. Uh, I'll leave this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, the derivation as an exercise for you uh, that you can simplify this relation to this uh, uh, simple, uh, simpler set of uh, equations. And one should note that the equations has uh, uh, interesting features uh, once you, uh, uh, has interesting uh, features if you split them with respect to the SU2R symmetry. Namely, uh, they complete into SU2R multiplets. And this ensures that the, uh, the, the, the solutions actually manifest preserve into two supersymmetry. Okay. Okay. So let's now uh, talk about the different kind of uh, branches on the modular space, which are solutions to these uh, equations. So uh, first of all, there's the so-called Coulomb branch. Uh, this is the case when the hypermultiple scalars are zero, a vanish, and the uh, and the the scalars in the in the two vector multiple do not vanish, but uh, otherwise has a trivial anti commutator uh, has a trivial commutator which is conjugate. Okay. Uh, in this case, it's easy to find the solutions. Uh, the phi essentially up to a gauge transformation has to lie in the Cartan subalgebra of the gauge symmetry uh, of the gauge algebra. For example, uh, in the case of SUN gauge theory, uh, the the uh, the this non-trivial expectation value would get least to a spon spontaneous symmetry breaking from SUN gauge group to its uh, torus subgroup. So, uh, so in general, the dimension of this uh, Coulomb branch uh, as a real uh, manifold uh, is, has dimension two times the rank of the gauge group because phi is a complex scalar. Okay. And because, because phi has a U1R charge, it carries U1R charge, but has a trivial SU2R charge, the Coulomb branch will spontaneously break uh, U1R symmetry, but will preserve SU2R symmetry. Uh, there's one thing I want to emphasize about the Coulomb branch, uh, namely that uh, so far our discussion has been purely classical. Uh, so we start from the Lagrangian and we just look at the classical potential and we find its minimum, uh, the zero value minimum. So in general, you will expect uh, quantum corrections to these uh, solutions. And indeed it happens for the Coulomb branch and quantum corrections are important. For example, naively you would expect the, the point where phi equal to zero would give rise to enhanced the gauge symmetry and massless W bosons. But this is not the case uh, once you take into account uh, uh, quantum effects. But what supersymmetry does is it still constrains the, the quantum de uh, deformed geometry. It turns out that the quantum deformed geometry uh, is still constrained to be a special Kähler manifold where the Kähler condition is, com comes from into one and the special is coming from uh, four into two, which I'll say, which, which I will say more about when we discuss the EFD of general footing two theories. On the other hand, uh, we have the Higgs branch. Uh, okay. In this case, uh, the, the expectation value uh, of the, of the uh, scalar in the footing two vector multiple is zero, but the hypermultiple scalars are not vanishing. 
And if you look at this set of equations, you can, if you look at a set of equations, you can easily convince yourself that uh, for general gauge group, they, they, it takes this, the following form. And uh, of course, you should uh, mod out by the uh, redundancies that's coming from the gauge transformations. Okay. The, just by the structure of this uh, uh, description of the Higgs range as a quotient, you can uh, figure out this uh, dimension as a real manifold. Uh, this dimension is always a multiple of four. Okay. Uh, and it turns out that this manifold has a richer structure, uh, that is, it's a hypercalar. Okay. Uh, the fact that it has a hypercalar uh, structure is not so surprising physically, it's because uh, the, the, uh, the Higgs branch, uh, the Higgs branch coordinates will transform non-trivially on the SU2R. So there's a non-trivial SU2R action on this, uh, on this uh, Higgs branch. Okay. While the U1R symmetry uh, is completely preserved. Uh, compared to the, the Kuhn branch, uh, the Higgs branch has a very nice feature that is there's no uh, quantum correction to the, to the metric. Okay. And this is, this is thanks to some SUSY non-renormalization theorem, which essentially says that, uh, uh, well, one way to think about it is, is that the gauge coupling can be thought of as a bottom component of a chiral multiplet. And the chiral multiplets will decouple, to, uh, decouple from, uh, uh, from a hypermultiplet just by supersymmetric normalization. And this says that the Higgs branch uh, metric cannot be corrected by uh, gauge interactions. Okay. But I should emphasize that uh, uh, this, uh, this, strictly speaking, this no quantum correction applies to the weakly coupled region on the Higgs branch, namely far away from potential singularities or fixed points. So for example, the tip of the Higgs branch on the Coulomb branch may change uh, thanks to quantum, uh, quantum corrections. Okay. Finally, there's something slightly more complicated, which is uh, which is the the mixed branch, which is also admissible, uh, admissible from solving these kind of equations. So you can look for solutions with both non-vanishing uh, phi and also non-vanishing q and q tilde. Okay, so I will not say much about this, but I just want to point out some examples. For example, the Hoarding Forster Briamios, which can be thought of as an in two theory, actually, for in two super component field theory, it consists of uh, in two super Briamios coupled to one adjoint hypermultiple. In this case, as you may have, you may remember, the vacuum modular space of this theory uh, exactly is given by. Uh, uh, requiring this uh, uh, scalars phi in the vector multiplet and q q turtle, which are scalars in adjoint hypermultiplet multiplet, to lie in the cartan. Okay. They're all on that non vanishing, and this corresponds to a mixed branch. Okay. So, in, in fact, the pointing report does not have any pure Higgs branch or pure Coulomb branch, it only has a mixed branch. Okay. So, general picture you, have, you should have in mind that uh, for the structure of the modular space of according uh, the two super, uh, super symmetric theory, is that there's some Coulomb branch, okay? The Coulomb branch may have singularities where extra Higgs branch emerges, okay? But they can also have uh, mixed branches, which are uh, which have a which can have a lag on the Coulomb branch, but with a non-trivial fiber which can intersect with the Higgs branch. Okay? So there's a this is this is the general picture that you, you should have in mind for the modular space of the two theories. Okay. So so far, the discussion is um, uh, the fourteen two Lagrangian discussion. This discussion is mostly kinematical and classical. Okay, uh, except for the fact that the Higgs branch uh, Higgs branch is highly protected by supersymmetry, so the classical is quantum. Um, but to go beyond uh, this uh, classical description in the other sectors, uh, we need to say a few things about uh, this. Uh, uh, refine the number normalization theorems in uh, group two, and also uh, uh, constraints on potential RG flows. So let me just briefly remind you uh, the. So there's uh, one question, Yifan. Yes. Uh, again, is there a theorem that says that the topology of n equals two Coulomb branch cannot be affected by quantum corrections? Is there a theorem? The topology. That's a that's a good question. Let's see.
The short answer is I, I don't know. Although in the examples that, uh, oh, can some classical classical vacuum. I mean, the, the, the singularity will definitely change, but I'm not sure if that's what you mean by the topology. When you say topology, do you take into account the, like the holes on the cone branch in, 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 into account? So Ali just wrote, uh, in particular, can some of the classical vacuum lift? Classical vacuum lift. Maybe Ali, you can just ask more specifically what you have in mind. The dimension, the dimension will not change, but uh, the yeah, but, 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 it, but could it be that classically like it's a plane? It's a, it's a complex plane, but uh, quantum mechanically, uh, only a discrete amount of vacuum are left. Sorry, the, the the metric is generally will not be applying once you take into account quantum correction. So metric will definitely metric definitely does get deformation. It, it, it does get quantum corrections as you yeah really mentioned, but right. um, but in like generic QFTs, uh, it al it also happens that you have um, some classical moduli space of vacua, but then yeah. you ask how many vacu vacua actually uh, survive quantum corrections. Right. So in the fourteen to one context, it's because of super uh, because of this uh, super potential like the ADS. Uh, type super potential coming yeah. from Mason towns that lifts the vacua. But yeah. this kind of super symmetrical, super potential deformation is forbidden from the 14 root 2 supersymmetry. I, I see. So there are no deformations, there are no allowed deformations. Right. For the equals. Okay. Yeah, you can only change the killer potential, right? That's okay. The, that's the metric. Yeah. Yeah, so also Lakshya was just commenting exactly that on the chat. There was one oh. other question by Marina David. What about uh -huh. one of corrections to the mixed branch? Oh, that, 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 that's a very good question. So, uh, so uh, uh, it will certainly modify the mixed branch uh, because the mixed branch has one leg on the clone branch, right? One more question uh, people, here. Yes, people people have yes. studied uh, people have studied the mixed branch, the interaction between mixed branch and clone yes. branch. There's our Sometimes called this uh, roots. I think it's some earlier paper from Philip Archer and mm -hmm. friends in the nineties have studied this. Yes. One more question: uh, People studied the intersection between mixed branch and I guess that's what you just answered. Yes. So people have studied uh -huh, this uh -huh. before. Yeah. And one more question from Stefano Cremonesi. If you allow you engage, oh, so it's a comment. If you allow you one gauge groups, you can turn on FI terms, which lifts the Coulomb branch. Right, so but that's not a dynamical true. process. Yeah. Yes, that, that's a good point. Uh, that's something you can do, but it's not a, this term cannot be generated dyna dynamically, the FI term. Okay. Okay. Okay, so so let me talk about uh, just briefly review the briefly review the this uh, supersymmetric constraints uh, coming from uh, into one holomorphy. Okay, so the statement of into one holomorphy, uh, thanks to the work of Cyberg, says that there exists a scheme, a renormalization scheme, such that uh, the superpotential is not renormalized, or more precisely holomorphic, remain holomorphic uh, in both background and uh, dynamical chiral supercules. But the killer potential um, re may receive uh, non-trivial quantum corrections, okay, in the form of uh, uh, wave function uh, renormalizations of the fields. But with into two su supersymmetry, uh, you get a stronger constraint, because as I uh, emphasized before, the super into two supersymmetry will tie together uh, the uh, superpotential and the killer potential. So it will actually say that uh, uh, there's no there's no uh, quantum correction to the killer potential as well when saying two supersymmetry. Okay. Um, okay. So so in more detail, uh, but there there's still some po a possible uh, holomorphic uh, renormalization of the of the holomorphic variables in the super potential. So let me say what that is. So let's 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 focus on the angry two uh, super Amos action, which contains this uh, uh, um, uh, this uh, superpotential term 
which is a superspace uh, description of the super YAML section. This tau, uh, which I've already mentioned before, is the complexified gauge coupling. It's a combination of the uh, GMLs and also the uh, four-dimensional data angle. Okay, you can think of think of this uh, this tau as the bottom component of a background pyro superfield. Okay, if you want to evoke this uh, homomorphy arguments. So so then the homomorphy argument will tell you that uh, uh, the superpotential under um, under renormalization uh, should be an, uh, should be a homomorphic function of the uh, of this uh, background coupling, which I'll uh, call tau uv here, if these are the uv couplings, okay? And uh, uh, because perturbative dependence uh, would have to, uh, perturbative dependence cannot depend on theta, so it, it's just given by the measuring part of tau. The only uh, hom holomorphic randomization of tau can only have this one loop uh, piece, okay? Because this one loop piece are independent of, um, of uh, of uh, g square at all in this normalization, but sub in term will depend on g square, and those terms will necessarily uh, be incompatible with holomorphy. Okay, so in other words, this uh, uh, you can conclude that this uh, renormalization of the gauge coupling is one loop exact perturbatively. Okay, and this uh, coefficient you can uh, extract by a standard computation that you probably learned from Tusking and Schroeder, uh, it's this uh, one loop running uh, coefficient B, okay? uh, which can be uh, extracted from the content of the uh, fields in your Lagrangian. Okay? And the for, for the 14 root two of fields, it will simplify to this uh, simple combination between the thinking index of the, uh, of the adjoint representation and also the thinking index associated with the matter representation. Okay? And uh, important uh, quantity that uh, that uh, uh, comes up with when when there's non-trivial RG flow, namely when B is greater than zero, is this uh, so-called dynamical skill, which is a perturbative RG invariant, which can be defined as the following combination. Okay, so it's RG invariant associated with uh, this running. And this dynamical skill has physical con consequence in the sense that for uh, energy scale smaller if B is greater than zero. For energy scale that's smaller than lambda, uh, the physics is strong. But the gauge the effective gauge coupling is large, a finite and large. But for energy scale that's bigger than lambda, the physics the the effective gauge coupling is weak. Okay. So it the uh, so this dynamical scale characterized the 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 uh, importance of gauge coupling, the strong strongness of the gauge coupling. Okay. Uh, with this dynamical skill, uh, you can rewrite you can rewrite uh, the the uh, the effective uh, coupling uh, in, in the following form as a given energy skill in the following form. Okay. Where I've included in the dot dot dots, uh, which was missing here. So there are there as I said this 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 uh, this running is one loop exact perturbatively, but there could be non perturbative corrections. This non perturbative corrections can be rewritten in the following form. These are coming from instantons. And uh, uh, I'll leave it as an exercise for you to figure out why these are the only uh, terms that are relevant. Okay. This a n are coefficients, uh, numerical coefficients, which are uh, which which uh, to determine them you need to you need to know more about the the matter content. Okay. But the expansion is completely fixed. So uh, there are two scenarios uh, starting from such a into Lagrangian. One scenario is that the the this uh, one loop running coefficient b is actually zero. So in that case, it means that at one loop, the gauge coupling does not run, and it turns out that it also means that the tau is completely marginal. It's exactly marginal, and uh, because the tau is exactly marginal, you have a manifest superconformal field theory. So in this case, here I've used the fact that four D scale invariance implies conformal invariance. Okay. And there are familiar examples of such theories. For example, SQCD, so SUN uh, super Yamil's theory, coupled uh, to 2N uh, hypermultiplets in the fundamental representation. Okay. So in this case, the B is equal to two times N, which is the uh, thinking index for uh, the adjoint representation, the same as the two cos number, minus 2N times a half, uh, sorry, 
2 n times 2 times a half. 2 is coming from the fact that hyperbolic multiplet has two fermions, uh, two wild uh, two fermions. And the half is coming from the thinking that it's all the fundamental representation. And that's zero. Okay. And just by, uh, just by searching for matter content and gauge group such that B is zero, you can attempt to classify uh, conformal Lagrangians. So in particular, if you focus on the case when uh, the uh, the gauge group is uh, a special unit SU type gauge group, and you, your matter content are always by fundamental hypermultiples coupled to different unit gauge group, and there's a nice classification. It turns out it coincides with classification of thinking index. Oh, sorry, with thinking uh, diagrams and affine thinking diagrams, okay. uh, such as the the E E six quiver. Okay. Uh, can you see the cursor? Can you see the cursor? Yes, uh, not okay. and not at the moment. Somehow not my screen. Yeah, not somehow not my. No, my no, screen. I think it's those. It was there before. Oh, the screen froze. Well, it could be that you might have. Well, I don't know. Maybe change the page. Can't go back. Yeah, let me let me let me try that. Okay, okay, you can see it now. No. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, you have this uh, E6 quiver, which is uh, built out of unitary gauge groups of rank n, 2 n, 3 n, and so on. And you can check that uh, this is a conformal Lagrangian, namely p is equal to zero for each of the gauge nodes. Okay. And if you consider more general uh, gauge groups and the general matter content, the general classification was uh, pursued in this paper. Okay. For like conformal Lagrangians. Okay, uh, a more interesting case, uh, well, uh, a less, uh, is a, 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 well, somewhat more interesting case is when the, uh, this uh, one loop running is non trivial. So B is bigger than zero, and this means that you have an asymptotic free theory, sorry, asymptotic free uh, theory that's strongly coupled in the IR for energy scale that's uh, smaller than the dynamical scale. Okay. And in this cases, uh, you don't have manifest superconforming invariance, but you can have emergent superconforming invariance in IR, and it could be an emergent superconforming field theory. And the, the way that uh, people have been trying to uh, locate such, such conformal field theory is to tune various angle two preserving uh, parameters in the Lagrangian, such as the potential mass parameters uh, associated with flavor symmetries of your, uh, of your theory, the dynamical scale itself, as well as potentially the VEV of various uh, protected operators uh, in, the, in the theory, such as the Coulomb branch VEV. Okay. As, a, as an example, uh, the SU2 uh, super Yamil's theory, in the two supersymmetric super Yamil's theory, coupled to one fundamental hypermultiplets, and also the pure SU3 uh, super Yamil's theory, uh, has on, the, on its IR Coulomb branch. Uh, super conformal fixed point that's described by this so-called A1, A2 Archer Stockhaus theory, which is the first example of such a strongly coupled to fixed point that's emergent in IR. Okay. Later, we'll discuss how to realize this theory directly from a top-down approach, from either class S or from uh, type B. Now, uh, this, this, this might sound like a guess game, okay? But there are tools that will make this guess more systematic. Uh, that is to use the IR EFT, okay? And uh, the strategy will be, uh, be to identify the IR effective theory description for the UV Lagrangian. And you want to look for patches on the Coulomb branch, which correspond to tuning this parameter with some emergent scale invariance. And this is how, uh, how this uh, original Arthur Stoglitz theory was discovered. Okay. Okay, so let me let me say some things about the Coulomb branch EFT. Um, the so this is also, in other words, known as a subordinate geometry, also known as a spectacular geometry. Geometry, they all mean the same thing. So on the on the Coulomb branch, uh, generically, at a generic point on the Coulomb branch, uh, the gauge group will be broken to this uh, uh, to the Cartan subgroup. Uh, you want to the R, where R is the rank of the of the gauge group. Okay. The, the, the fact that you have angle two supersymmetry throughout means that in IR, the effective theory 
uh, away from potential singularity in the cool branch is described by some uh, uh, in the two uh, vector multiples, abelian vector multiples or photon multiples. And the details of the effective theory or the effective action that governs the dynamics of this uh, in the two photons will be, uh, will, be uh, will come from integrating out uh, the massive particles, which essentially determine the kilo potential uh, for this uh, photon, or in other words, the metric on the on the cool branch. Okay, uh, there's one there's a way to make this uh, make include two supersymmetry manifest on the on the on the cool branch. That is to use the uh, include two uh, free potential, which is a uh, which is a holomorphic quantity of the of the uh, include two uh, photon gauge uh, include two uh, photon uh, multiples, which are labeled by AI. Okay. And the kilo potential can be determined from the prepotential. So the 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 this prepotential uh, in the UV uh, is uh, can be described by uh, described by some uh, uh, correct term in the in two uh, vector multiplet, which I'll call phi. Okay. And uh, while in IR it will be more complicated, it will, it will be some uh, holomorphic function of AI. Uh, with various corrections that could depend on the dynamical skill and mass deformation if you turn them on. And the game here is to try to determine the this IR function from the UV uh, from the UV expression. Okay. And one should remember that there's a constraint, there's a non-trivial constraint from unitarity, which says that the imaginary part of this IR effective coupling should be positive definite. Okay. Uh, I should just, just emphasize that uh, just from this quadratic piece of this effective action, you can determine the uh, the cars one to u one gauge field uh, action. Okay. There's the usual uh, uh, connect term for the for the Maxwell theory, and there's also the the theta angle. So for the rest of the discussion, I'll focus on the rank one case for simplicity. Okay. Uh, the the special geometry comes into play here uh, as uh, through the following. Uh, uh, so-called special coordinates, which ha has important physical meaning. So A is what I called before, these AIs. The, there's uh, in the two superfields uh, whose bottom component is the scalar in the in two vector multiplet. And there's this AD, which is the, which can be thought of as in the two vector multiplets whose bottom component is the dual, uh, well, which contains the vector field, which is the dual photon, okay? which, whose bottom component, component is another scalar. And this uh, and this uh, this uh, dual angle two gauge field uh, it can be determined from the from A uh, by by taking a, a holomorphic derivative with respect to the prepotential. So A and A D carry the same information as the prepotential. Okay? And the effective uh, IR gauge coupling can be can be obtained by taking a further descriptive derivative with respect to A. Okay? And the metric the metric on the Coulomb branch is determined by the imaginary part of this uh, uh, effective error coupling. Okay. And uh, this tau, uh, just by its notation, looks similar to something you may have encountered uh, uh, when, you, when you studied the Riemann surfaces as the complex structure of the torus. And this is already a hint for some emergent torus, which we'll make manifest later. OK, so, so something important about this effective theory. Yes. So small a is the bottom component of a vector multiple. Uh, so here I'm uh, abusing the notation a little, little bit. So so uh, in this notation, a means the superfield linked to super superfield whose bottom component, which I'm also calling a here. So uh, okay. my real question is this: the, is the theory this a i a j? They're yeah. from the different. Cartons, shouldn't it be a free theory if it's just U1, everything is in the adjoint, but you have some interaction between AI and AJ? Uh, I mean, the, there's a non-trivial metric. Uh, so so, so if, if, if you are far away on the Coulomb branch, uh, it's true that it's going to be free, and it's just uh, this, uh, you just have this, this term, and this is diagonal, essentially. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you move closer to the, to the origin, or other singularities, there are non-trivial corrections to this effective action. Uh, that may involve, say, inverse power of A and the dynamical scale. Okay. Yeah. And this uh, this non-trivial interaction is coming from from integrating out massive particles. Okay. 
Okay. So one thing I should uh, uh, emphasize about the Kirby theory is that it enjoys the, the electromagnetic ma magnetic duality, which basically says that uh, you can switch between your description of the effect theory using either A or a combination of A and the dual uh, angle two superfield AB. Okay. And correspondingly, the uh, this effective coupling will also change depending of your frame and light of uh, preference. But the, the physics will not change. It's just, you're just changing the way that you describe the effective theory. Okay. So, uh, so in terms of this uh, special, special geometry language, it just means that uh, a choice of frame to describe the EFD is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the choice of special coordinates for the, uh, for the special geometry description on the Coulomb branch. Okay. So a, a, a schematic picture you should keep in mind is that if you use the special coordinates to define the, uh, to describe the Coulomb branch, okay, which are also known as the U plane in the rank one case, uh, you have various patches where where you have uh, uh, locally the special coordinates. But when you go from one patch to another, uh, there may be a non-trivial uh, uh, you know, electromagnetic duality involved, okay, which is a change of frame. Okay. And with this picture in mind, uh, you can you can also say that the Coulomb branch effect theory is essentially described by a flat SL2Z bundle whose homomorphic section is given by this uh, doublet A and A dual. Okay, and something that uh, transform under the electromagnetic duality are are particles like electrons and uh, ions and monopoles. And this uh, among these objects, there are the BPS particles. Which saturate, saturate a certain BPS condition. So, from inclusive supersymmetry, uh, the mass of these particles will be bounded below by the absolute value of the center charge. Okay. The center charge in this context is determined by the by this uh, um, by the. So here I'm uh, again abusing notation. This A and A dual here are the bottom component of the corresponding inclusive superfields. And the center charge will also depend on uh, background mass parameters if you turn them on. Uh, as I said, the intrusive supersymmetry will require this mass to be bounded below. Uh, but for uh, for the supersymmetric particles, this uh, condition can be satisfied, and these are the BPS particles. Okay, so let's let's now talk about the general strategy uh, to solve for uh, this uh, pre potential. Okay, so as I mentioned, the, this uh, low energy effective theory, at least to the two degree two level, so to higher degree level, it can be get more complicated. But at least to the two degree two level. Is equivalent to super potential. Sorry, equivalent to the determining the pre potential, or in other words, the A and A dual. Okay, these are equivalent. Carry the same information. So, what is the strategy to, to determine this? So, you want to first explore a constraint, general constraints. So here it's coming from holomorphy. So the super potential. Sorry, the pre potential is a holomorphic function of this uh, uh, two superfield A. That's a constraint from holomorphy. And also potential symmetry constraints. If you if your uh, if your UV theory has uh, uh, symmetries, uh, extra symmetry that will give two constraints on this uh, pre potential. Uh, mostly it will come from U1 symmetry, U1 R symmetry. Um, and you also also want to use the knowledge about the uh, UV in the in the sense that uh, um, uh, in a large valve large valve limit and uh, the uh, the, the physics is weakly coupled on the Coulomb branch, and you can trust the, the uh, com uh, competition directly using the UV Lagrangian. Okay. And with this uh, general constraints, you can you can convince yourself that the this is the following ansatz for the pre potential. Okay. So as as uh, as it was asked in the previous, uh, uh, someone asked, um, in particular it involves terms that have non-trivial dependence on A. So this term is coming from the weak coupling limit of the Coulomb branch. This is the one loop running that you may have uh, seen uh, that you have shown you before, and these are the potential instant corrections. Okay. And these FKs are undetermined coefficients, uh, which you can you can determine in different ways. So one way is to directly compute this F. So I should emphasize that this is question. Uh, this expansion only makes sense for. For uh, when A is uh, when you are on the Coulomb branch, uh, when you are far kind of far away from the strong coupled region, uh, when the when the when the scalar field A is uh, larger than uh, expected value of A is larger than uh, the strong coupling scale, 
And you can compute these coefficients by directly computing the instantan effects because these are these are weighted by e to the uh, two pi i tau uh, times some integer. And this is done by some nice work from, from uh, Microsoft. And alternatively, you can also uh, uh, because because f is a highly constrained function, it's a holomorphic function of a. You can you can you can determine uh, sorry a meromorphic function of a. You can determine this by uh, by uh, the singularity structure, okay? And this is the approach that's uh, taken by uh, Sadler Witten in 94, okay? So how should we understand uh, these uh, singularities? So physically, uh, the singularities uh, are, uh, I mean, the singularities are places where the cone branch effective period uh, breaks down. So uh, one way to see them is that the metric or the effective gauge coupling will diverge at the singularities. And a physical inter interpretation of this uh, this uh, phenomena is that certain massless certain massive particles, which you have uh, which you have assumed to be massive and integrated out to derive the Coulomb branch effect action, actually becomes massless at its uh, singular points. Okay. This uh, this singularity also take incarnations uh, in the special geometry uh, description as some certain uh, 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 monodromies. Uh, of this uh, doublet AD and uh, this typo AD and A, um, A2 and A uh, when you go around the circle. Okay, and uh, because this uh, this are I mean this uh, this A dual is a homomorphic function of A. Uh, if there's no singularity, then there's no non-trivial holonomy. So uh, the halami is, uh, is just a caricature of this uh, singularity on the Coulomb branch. Okay. And furthermore, this uh, this homodromies are constrained uh, by the fact that you know the product of this homodromy around the singularity, all possible singularity on the Coulomb branch, should be matched to the monodromy at infinity if there's any. Okay. So this this uh, constraint, so this kind of general discussion will constrain the possible singularity structure on the on the Coulomb branch. And in turn, constrain these coefficients. Okay? And with some additional physical input, you can determine these guys without doing any extra instantan computations. So, just to give you a flavor of uh, what the singularities can look like, uh, you can consider the case of uh, uh, just a U1 photon coupled to a charged hypermultiplet of charge Q, char uh, sorry, of charge square root Q. Uh, in this case, a simple analysis tells you that the uh, the, the the one loop running uh, gives you the uh, the effective gauge coupling, which depends on Q and the um, and the uh, this uh, integer superfield A as follows. Uh, here, the integer superfield A essentially determines the the mass of this uh, charged hyper. Okay. So, in particular, uh, in this case, if you uh, if you go around, uh, if you uh, if you if you if you stay around the 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 point where a equals zero, where the hypermultiplet become become massless, and you go around go around the circle, you can see that this uh, if this uh, coupling will pick up a phase, uh, pick up a shift that's uh, by an integer q. Okay? And this is uh, this is uh, of course the familiar uh, monotony that due to the t uh, elements raised to the q power. More generally, you can have singularities that are due to other uh, particles that become massless, not electrons, but the ions. Uh, and a simple analysis will tell you that the monotromy will be this, in the same, uh, uh, will be essentially in the same consciousness class as the, as the case for the electron or hypermultiplet, um, but uh, a different element of SO2Z, but in the same consciousness class. Okay. Uh, but more generally, uh, you can have multiple uh, multiple PPS particles that become uh, massless simultaneously at the singularity, and this give you give rise to some more uh, more general uh, uh, monodromies, and these are uh, classified by the Kalara classification. And this is uh, you can you can read about this in this uh, recent paper from uh, Archers and uh, friends in 2015. Okay. All right, so so I've uh, I've told you that uh, a few places where there's a hint for some emergent uh, Riemann surface or torus in this uh, rank one case. So let's let's try to make that more precise. Okay. So uh, just looking at the Coulomb branch according to theory, we see various homodromies 
for uh, for uh, SL two Z that's coming from singularities uh, where certain massless certain massive BPS particles become massless. Okay. Uh, one can think about uh, one can think about this as follows. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, one can first think about this uh, this uh, this town, the effective coupling on the Coulomb branch as the compact structure of a uh, emergent torus. So let's let's call that sigma u, and and imagine the uh, the the BPS particles are coming from uh, the mass of BPS particles are determined. Okay, let me, let me say it differently. Let me say it differently. So um, so imagine that uh, um, um, the this effect coupling tau is uh, this compact structure of some emergent torus, and this torus can be described uh, algebraically as a elliptic curve by this equation. Uh, this compact structure depends on u, and that dependence can be uh, uh, can be uh, can be can be given in this description as the uh, dependence of the coefficients. Okay, so this this uh, compact structure of this torus will depend on u, okay. and this m are some additional mass dependence which you can put in if you turn on mass deformations. And uh, in terms of this emergent torus, uh, there's a there's a, a canonical basis of cycles uh, which are called A and B, and you can you can you can identify this uh, uh, coordinates A and A D on the Coulomb branch, the special coordinates on A and A D, as integrals of certain differential on this canonical uh, basis of cycles A and B, okay? and this differential is the so-called Sabre-Witten differential. It's a meromorphic one form on the on the on this uh, emergent uh, Riemann surface, which is also known as the Sabre-Witten curve. Okay? And the differential is subject to the constraints known as the special Kitter constraint, which says that if you take a derivative with respect to the u, which is the global coordinates on the Coulomb branch, it splits out some holomorphic uh, non-vanishing uh, uh, one form on the on the Riemann surface, as well as some uh, exact ambiguities. And the re re uh, residue of this uh, of the separate differential would depend on the mass deformations, potential mass deformations, uh, in the in the EFT. And so here uh, I've just said these words, and this is supposed to be a translation between the Coulomb branch EFT data to some emergent torus, emergent Riemann surface description. This what this description buys us is that you can interpret uh, naturally the singularities as points where as moduli of the torus where uh, where certain cycles shrink. Okay, so the, the in, in those cases the 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 uh, the BPS particle uh, the massive BPS particle can become massless. Okay, because their mass is essentially determined by this uh, uh, by this uh, contouring uh, by this integral. Okay? So once you have translated the uh, the Coulomb branch uh, EFT data the A and the A dual in terms of this uh, uh, separating curve and separating differential, then solving the Coulomb branch EFT is can be translated into a problem of identifying the uh, the correct separating description in terms of the curve and the differential. Okay. Subject a question. to this uh, special killer constraints. Yes. By Federico Carta, is there any physical meaning for the killer parameter, a size of the torus or the size of the curve? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, not from the 4D and 2 super conformal field theory perspective, because uh, so so as we'll see uh, in the um, in the classes description, there's a um, there's a partial topological twist that you do when you compare the theory on the torus, and uh, as a consequence of that, you only depend the the 4D theory will only depend on the um, uh, the complex structure, not the killer killer parameter. But it's a it's a good question. So I'm saying this because that if you if you take the decoupling limit, uh, you know, in, in the sense that you only keep the 4D physics, the killer parameter will be gone. But if you look at some intermediate energy, uh, you will see the effect of the killer parameter. But that's beyond the 4D theory. I think okay. All right. So historically, this is what uh, I, I just uh, basically tried to compress what uh, Sabre Witten did in 1941 in the half of the slide. Uh, this is a his historically what uh, how people uh, what people did to uh, to 
kind of identify superconforming field theories on the on the column branch of SMLE three uh, into two gauge theories. So that is to translate the problem to some uh, sub, uh, the problem of searching for subunit curve and differential. And with some physical input, you can solve the column branch effective theory and then look for uh, superconforming points. But more recently, there's a, also a more direct approach to look for superconforming field theories uh, using the EFT. Uh, which is like a bottom-up classification, uh, thanks to the work of our jurors and friends, uh, starting from a serious paper in 2015, which is to uh, forget about the, the, the UV Lagrangian, for, forget about the SMLE free gauge theory, just directly study the EFT in the language of the subwithin geometry. So you want to look for uh, uh, a pair between the subwithin curve and the subwithin differential that has the manifest scale invariance building. So for the rank one case, uh, uh, this was studied in, uh, in quite details. So, uh, so in one rank one case, you can be very explicit. The subunit curve is a Euclid curve that can be put in this uh, so-called uh, wire stress form. Uh, there's coefficients which depend on the Coulomb branch uh, parameter u, okay? the one-dimensional Coulomb branch coordinates u. So this u are the co global coordinates on the Coulomb branch, um, which can be which are functions of this uh, uh, special coordinates a and a dual. Uh, and I'm using the choosing the u coordinate such that the u equal to zero is the candidate to superconform field theory point. So uh, the strategy of this uh, this paper is to impose uh, a, a C star action on the on the description of the curve. Okay. Uh, that is uh, the the u parameter naturally carries a C star charge because u is supposed to be a valve of a Coulomb branch uh, carrier primary operator. It carries u on our charge. The, the, so it, under a C star action, it will transform by a phase, uh, transform by a complex uh, number, uh, that, uh, uh, C up uh, to the R. And R is uh, essentially the R charge, and which is equal to the dimension on the Coulomb branch uh, carrier primary. And uh, just by demanding the C star uh, symmetry at, at the level of this elliptic curve, you can easily convince yourself that the F and G has to be monomials in U, okay? And, uh, there's also a physical constraint. Remind, remind, just remind you that uh, uh, the center charge, which determines the mass of PPS particles, has U on R charge one in the normalization here. And because um, because the center charge are proportional to uh, our combinations of A and A dual, and they are integrals of this uh, subwithin differential, this gives you a physical constraint on the U on R charge or C star scaling of lambda, which says has to be one as well. And we also know that uh, uh, the derivative of lambda with respect to u is this uh, 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 this holomorphic one form on the subwithin curve dx over dy. And with this kind of information and the uh, assumption that this is this is respect the C star symmetry, you can figure out the scaling dimension or R charge of uh, of this u coordinate. Okay? And it turns out the answer takes the following form. Okay, there's a finite set, and uh, find a set of uh, six possible, uh, sorry, seven possibilities, and all those possibilities are indeed realized by physical theories. So, namely, the first one is realized by the so-called A1A2 or George Stokas theory. The second one by the um, by the uh, uh, the A1A3 or this SU2, you know, you know, the section where it has SU2 flavor symmetry, and the third one is the has turns out to have SU3 symmetry, SU3 uh, flavor symmetry, and this one. This one is a familiar subwithin theory, namely SU2 gauge theory coupled to four fundamental hypermultiples. And the last three can be realized by the Minahan Dimashensky theories. Okay. So there's a question about the additional structure by Paul Ullmann. How important are additional structures on the Seibert-Witten curve? Like, does it require a vibration? Does it require a section? So could you have a genus one vibration and some additional? That's a good question. That's a good question. It might be also for the discussion se section. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't have a I don't have a quick answer to that question. That sounds like a possibility. Yeah, mm -hmm. you consider general genus one vibration as opposed to elliptic vibrations. Right. Right. Yeah, but perhaps that can be made uh, more, uh, I mean, in the context of F theory, that can be made more clear. I think so. F theory construction, F theory well, construction. I think you theory. just need to consider it as a 
you know, elliptic or as a genus one fibered I mean, surface. Yeah, yeah, I think you, you have some paper on that. <laughs> I haven't, but I think Paul has worked oh, on okay. this kind of aspect. I see. So I think this I see. is so, uh, part of the way here. Right, so and that's a potential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That's a potential way to generate new uh, encoding yeah. tools here. That's right. Something with additional discrete information. That's right. That's right. So Paul but answers, yeah, in F theory, the indeed important structures. I just don't know in this algorithm context. Um, oh, I see. Fabio refers to the ESFO paper, sure, but that realizes basically just these rank one theories. Whereas I think Paul was oh, asking more, could you generalize this even further? But maybe right, we can right. put this into the discussion section because I think all these more subtle issues were will be featured there. So. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So so we'll uh, just have one more slide. So uh, uh, so there are some caveats. Uh, so so here I've been talking about this uh, kind of bottom up approach to uh, classifying super compound field theories uh, using the subordinate geometry, namely the subordinate curve, the spinal subordinate curve, and differential. But there are caveats. So. Uh, if you just focus on the curve and the differential themselves, uh, it will not determine the CFT completely. Uh, this is explained in length by the paper from Philip Argeris and uh, uh, friends, uh, starting from 2015, uh, where, this, we, uh, where they pointed out that you are supposed to satisfy, uh, study general deformations of the, the subunit geometry, such as coming from mass deformations. So in particular, a given uh, singular subordinate curve and the differential can correspond to multiple uh, multiple uh, uh, super complex field theories at the origin, uh, depending on different different deformation pattern. A particular example is the you know the N two four super mills versus the SU two coupled to four fundamental hypermultiplets. They have the same singular subordinate geometry, but of course they are very different theories. And there are also many things you can extract from the for the CFT uh, from the effective theory description. Uh, this is something that I uh, point, uh, try to uh, advertise on this uh, philosophy slide. Okay. Uh, uh, in particular, of course, you can, uh, because the Coulomb branch are parameterized by the VEV of the curve primaries at the Coulomb branch curve primaries at the fixed point, you can extract information about the spectrum of such curve primaries just from the EFD. Okay. And you can also uh, extract the chiral couplings and the mass deformations of the, C because they, uh, of the CFT because they manifest themselves through the Coulomb branch effective theory. Okay. Uh, and the mass deformations, by studying some fine st finer structure of the mass deformations, uh, sometimes, but not always, you can figure out the, the global symmetry at the fixed point. Okay. Because there, sometimes there are accidents where, uh, uh, where certain because this mass parameter uh, typically will show up in the uh, in the subordinate geometry as some um, um, fundamental invariance associated with the corresponding uh, global symmetry group, and there are some accidents where this invariance could coincide for different global symmetry groups. And there's also uh, a way to determine uh, the uh, some uh, conformal or to hold uh, anomaly uh, at the fixed point, uh, some some uh, along the same strategy that Contaro mentioned. Uh, through the anomaly matching. So essentially is that uh, uh, you can compute such anomalies uh, away from the fixed point using the effective theory. So importantly here, there's a, for the, uh, you know, for the couple A and C couple anomaly and the, uh, the uh, to hope anomaly associated with the global symmetries, it receives contribution from the free fields, which is very easy to compute uh, on the Coulomb branch. But because of the non-trivial interactions, there are also contributions to this uh, anomalies coming from uh, West, uh, West Sumino terms. Okay, and this is uh, essentially not putting this language, but this is essentially the strategy was used in uh, the paper from Shapir and Tachikawa to figure out anomalies of various other stockless theories. Uh, by anomalies, I mean this A, C, and uh, uh, flavor anomaly KG. Okay, so I've said a lot uh, about this uh, uh, this uh, uh, emergent torus, but uh, and emergent uh, you know differential. Of course, you would wonder uh, what is the physical meaning. Is there a physical meaning of this uh, this uh, this emergent geometry? And the answer is yes. And this will come come naturally from the two gamma zero theory, and uh, and this will be the 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 uh, this will be talk, uh, covered in the next lecture. So let me just end with some. Uh, 
uh, and with some open questions, okay? Uh, along with the, some open questions we already discussed in the beginning of the lecture. So one open question that I find very curious is the possibility of a, a, a minimal 14 root 2 superconform field theory. So by minimal here, I mean a minimal in the sense uh, it has a minimal uh, conformal only, for example, or uh, in a sense like a, a more kind of a more ambitious minimal theory is, is the theory of a rank zero. So here, like uh, the example I talked about is rank one. Uh, so I'm assumed, I, I have assumed from the beginning that the theory has a, has a Kuhnberg homology space. But I, I know of no few, few theoretic uh, arguments that tells you that it cannot have an interacting CFT uh, after rank, rank zero without a Kuhnberg branch. And the, indeed, there's some uh, tangential evidence for this, uh, but not in 4D, but in 3D. So there's some recent nice paper from, uh, uh, from these authors that point out that there are 3D into four superconformal field theory, which has the same number of supercharges as 14 root 2, that does not have a Kuhn branch or nor a Higgs branch, but otherwise has into four supersymmetry and has a non trivial op operator spectrum. So it's interacting, effectively. They have computed superconformal index and also the S3 kind of function and that. And this has a simple description in the UV as a transcendence theory, U1 at level three minus three halves coupled to a, a chiral multiplet, 3, 3D into two chiral multiplet of charge one. And they showed that the theory has a, uh, exhibits a symmetry enhancement in IR to, SU, uh, to uh, 3D into four. So, th so this suggests that maybe, maybe uh, one way to kind of, uh, to, to discover such rank zero, some like a minimal theory without Coulomb branch chiral primaries is to study some into one, 4D into one flows, perhaps using the, technology de developed by these authors and many other people. And another way to potentially uh, uh, kind, of, uh, I, uh, kind of discover this kind of theory is to pursue a bootstrap type analysis where you analyze, uh, you know, four point functional stress tensor and assume that, uh, well, you analyze four point functional stress tensor and try to bootstrap the theory with minimal center charge. That's one approach. And another uh, kind of in interesting feature of the 14 tooth theory is the rationality. So this is the rationality in quotation mark. So, so if, you, if you have done any computation in 14 to theory, you see various uh, features of rationality. The center charge are rational. The protected operator spectrum has rational uh, R charges, rational dimensions. And, and, if, and the, in this car algebra context, so there's a nice, uh, I don't have time to discuss, but there's a nice 2D car algebra that correspond to each 14 to two super conform field theory. And this car algebra also has some uh, nice rational-like features, meaning that there's uh, nice characters which transform among one another under uh, under a modular transformation. Uh, but this is the modular transformation on S1 times S3. Uh, so, th so this this put the, the so so in, in some sense the fourteen to two as a super field field theory in four dimensions is almost like minimal models in two dimensions. It has this uh, rational features. So the question is, is this, is this something that's uh, supposed to hold in general for the two? Uh, perhaps we can understand this from some modularity features of for the two. Maybe perhaps there's a hidden modularity structure. So this, this is some, some question I just want to point out. And also uh, the question is, uh, which I find uh, interesting is, uh, how effective is the effective field theory approach to super field theories? Uh, so from this, uh, so this is this this approach has been taken by uh, Philip and friends uh, uh, in, in many iterations. Uh, there are various modifications when, when you do to the rules that you impose on EFT to have a to have a fixed point, uh, because uh, so so the, the, at some point they generate a larger class of examples which can be real, which do not have realization in string theory or F theory or, or whatever construction, and they have to impose additional con conditions on the separate geometry to shrink down that list. So to this point, I don't know if there's a complete set of uh, conditions. This is a bit like swamp land uh, um, logic. So want to have a more uh, complete set of uh, conditions that we can put on the EFT such that uh, you, can, you can pinpoint there's a CFT. Okay. Uh, another related thing is that I want to point out that uh, there's some uh, recent uh, paper that point out that there could be Coulomb branch uh, uh, sorry, there could be uh, there could be uh, a, a fourteen to two Coulomb branch, which uh, sorry fourteen to two superconformal field theory where the Coulomb branch covering is not freely generated, 
uh, and that's also uh, kind of surprising uh, from because it doesn't have uh, uh, constructions in you know f theory or uh, string theory or m theory. Um, I mean, there are approaches again in this like effective theory uh, uh, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, spirit. So it will be interesting to see whether there are kind of uh, general constraints one can one can say whether this this kind of cone branch is allowed or not. Okay, so I'll 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 end here and uh, we can discuss the questions. If there are any. Okay, hey, thanks very much for this really beautiful lecture, Yifan. So thank you. let's all thank in our very limited ways. I'm clapping, yes. <laughs> um, and with our hands. Um, so any questions? There were already lots of questions in the chat. Um, oh, let me see. So I think there was a discussion basically following from Power's question. And I think Fabio had a question following up on that. Um, regarding assholes, whether one knows what the fixed actual does and valued um, versions of that are. As far as I know, I don't think that's known. I see. So people are um, contemplating the possibility of a new rank one theories coming from possible this uh, genus one preparation, which is not elliptic. That seems that was sort of what the discussion started off with. Yes. Is that I mean, there, maybe a more general question is, is that a reasonable thing to consider, I mean, of course, by having this additional data, you would change the spectrum of, you know, line operators, different higher form symmetries, I guess. Is this related to this uh, uh, potentially like a non-complete uh, spectrum, like a non-principal no, polarization? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so that's, that's, yeah, so, so that's against the logic of, uh, uh, of uh, I think, the reading between the line paper where this uh, kind of uh, maximality is uh, assumed. But but uh, I think that's also not justified in any way. It's just the assumption. So I would say that uh, I would say it will give rise to pro pro probably will give rise to new theories. Okay. Are there any other questions regarding all of the whole lecture from the students? Uh, can you say something about the discrete data? All oh, right. The yeah. At the beginning. Right. So, so for the for the, sorry, the, this is about fourteen to four. Yes, fourteen to four and sixty two comma zero was the question. Right. Yeah. So for fourteen to four, uh, sub, a, a subset of this discrete data is uh, is uh, explained the paper from uh, out there. Oh, sorry, Aharoni, uh, Tajikawa, and Cyberg. Uh, it's coming from its uh, discrete data angle. Right. Yes, uh, but there are also finer constraints. Sorry, fine, finer uh, 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 discrete data, which which be relevant if you put the theory on like uh, unorientable manifolds, which is only uh, discussed recently. Okay, um, what, right. what's the reference for that? Uh, I remember. Uh, let's see. There are some paper from Putrov and Juven and uh, and the collaborators. Title has Yamil's theory in it. I see. And and what about the yeah for the, for the yeah for the two comma zero case, uh, yeah I haven't analyzed that so uh, uh, I think uh, at least partly it was addressed in the paper from um, at least, I, I think at least partly it was uh, at least it was discussed in the paper from UG the single author paper, title has. Uh, uh, 62 comma zero and discrete data or discrete data angle, something like that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, well, I guess one one thing that the one can. Okay, so this is uh, this is something that I don't know, but I can maybe just say it. So, the two comma zero theory. Uh, has some kind of uh, alter automorphism symmetry. So I don't know if you can try to gauge that, what kind of theory you get, or two to the order, just to the orbit for the other. I see. I see. Uh, well, of course, for the first thing you should check that there's no total nominee associated with this uh, alter alter Wilson symmetry. Yeah. I should, I should say that this this gauging this alter automorphism symmetry was used in the paper from um, 
Philip and Philip Rogers and uh, Mary Montoni to discover this uh, potential uh, sporting into theory uh, whose cool branch is not freely generated. But they didn't really analyze the potential anomalies. So this, this may not be a legit procedure. Yeah. Okay, so the theme continues on this few data. So from Stefano Cremonese, a silly pedantic question regarding rank zero SCFTs. Do you disregard discrete gauge theories, meaning gauge group is a finite group? Mm, let's see. Uh, right. So, so I, I've, I've uh, implicitly counted those theories as uh, as uh, uh, free theories. Yeah, but there are there are non-trivial uh, defects. That's right. So, so when I say interacting, I want theory with a non-trivial uh, local operator spectrum. That's not that doesn't coincide with a free theory. So you're right that uh, by doing discrete gauging on free fields, say hypermultiplets, uh, you can get theory with non-trivial uh, defect spectrum. But the the local operator spectrum is just that other free theory up to the quotient, which you know it's uh, it's kind of trivial. Okay, Stefano, do you want to answer to that? I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's if that's a fair. Uh, if you have something more more um, sophisticated in mind. I, Okay. That's fine, he says. Yeah. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes. Okay, so uh, you mentioned that um, in the Coulomb branch of pure SU3, there is this point in which we find the Argyris Douglas theory A1, A2. Yeah, and, yes. Uh, I think, yes, yes. And I, I think in general, uh, for uh, pure simply laced G, we find points where we find A1, G. So That's right. I was wondering, uh, I was wondering if people ever considered the uh, non simply laced case, like take a pure uh, SP2. And do we find that Jacques Douglas theory at special points in the Coulomb branch of this uh, pure SP2 theory? And has this ever been studied? Huh. That, that's a very, very good question. So uh, I have some guesses for what these theories would be, but I, I, I don't remember if they are studied. It would be interesting I, to study this. Uh, you also don't know anything, so I was wondering if you knew a reference or something, or if it's open. Oh, so, so, right. So, so this SP theories uh, can be embedded in class S construction by uh, including, okay, so this is a jumping ahead, but in the class S description, this SP theory can be constructed by uh, including some outer automorphism twist once you compare on the, when you compare on the Riemann surface. So I, I would suspect that this uh, Arjuna Douglas point, Douglas point that you find uh, at the Coulomb branch of this as not be free, you know, SP gauge theory, can be maybe described by you know um, by this uh, by some potential irregular punctures in the class S setup with some outer automorphism twist. Mm -hmm. But even without class S, one could maybe do it the old way, just from the yeah. You can, you can, of course, you can do it the old way. Of course, yes, you can also do it the old way. Right. That's right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I, I have another question. Yes. Uh, so uh, I've seen the Argyris Douglas series being labeled by two Lie algebras. Can you say why are they labeled by two Lie algebras and what do they sort of physically represent? Yeah. So this will be uh, next. Uh, I will talk about this next talk. But so uh, I can give you a quick answer. So so that so the, you're talking about the GG prime theories, right? Uh, so, sorry, which theories? Uh, G, G G prime. Yes, yes. Uh, right. Yeah. So the the label uh, there's several meanings to that label. So first of all, uh, it's a label that naturally comes from the type two p construction, where the where the pointing to two theory is coming from type two p on the Clavier threefold, where the Clavier threefold singularity is described by a hypersurface, and the hypersurface uh, is described by some uh, uh, polynomials. Sorry, by, by a collection of monomials, and these monomials correspond to the, uh, you know, the, you know, the superpotential that defines the AD, um, uh, the non gainsborough models. So, I see. so, so that's one aspect. Another aspect is that the, the, the BPS quiver of this uh, GG prime series takes the form of a, like a three dimensional diagram, which is essentially G. I mean, roughly speaking, G tensors G prime. The thinking diagram of G tensors the thinking diagram of G prime. I, I see. But I'll, I'll give you a concrete example in the next talk. So uh, in the next lecture. So, for example, for a, so is there uh, also some some sort of a labeling by the UV theories that they flow 
that you can get them by flow. So for example, A1, A2 is coming from this flow of SU3 as well as yeah. SU2 with NF equals one. Uh, so this seems very much like, um, uh, like SU3 is, is the A2 Lie algebra and SU2 with NF equals one as gauge group labeled by A1. Well, is but it, but you have to look for some invariance, right? But because as a, as a, as was as was pointed out by a previous person, also in the lecture, uh, both both SU two with one flavor and SU three pure YAMLs flow to the same A one A two theory. So you yeah. have to, if you want to look for some UV Lagrangian uh, combination, you have to look for some invariant combination. Right? Uh, we'll work, work for both. Right, right. So th that's that's exactly what I was asking. That if if like two IR dual theories are known, which always flow to the same. Argyris Douglas theory labels by G G prime, and does G and G prime have to do with the two IR dual theories in the UV? Uh, I don't think so because the A one E six has nothing to do with the okay. Well, well there's a there's okay. I mean, yeah, there's some relation. There is some relation, but it's not obvious. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the A one E six does have a does have a UV description in terms of the E six two comma zero theory, but yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, this this question will become more clear. I mean, uh, answers to this question will become more clear in next lecture when we talk about the type to be uh, set up. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I just want to comment on this question that uh, about rank zero again. So, so mm -hmm. what I was hoping is that maybe there's a for the uplift of the three D theory found by Doming and uh, 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 Masahiro. Uh, that will be a candidate for the new two theory. But in general, I mean, many of the three things for theory does have for the uplift, left up, uplift. By the way, the transformance level, I'm not, I'm not so sure, sure. Perhaps I can sort of continue on Stefano's question. Um, yeah. So you are arguing that for you that like things that are basically discrete gauge theories, you wouldn't count them as actually interacting CFTs um, because essentially the spectrum is the same as the free theory. Now in two dimensions you can also just start with a free theory like a U1 to the N theory and then you can do an order fold for example. Right because because the twist and operator so, there is local operator. Here the twist operator here is yeah, two dimensional. So, they have, so, it, so it's a matter of definition then no? Yeah 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 I want the theory to be I don't fear to be interacting uh, at an already at level, level local card. Local, local, local card. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a, yeah. Why is yeah. this the definition? <laughs> uh, Why it becomes semantics in, in the. At yeah, the it's point. A, yeah, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Paul has another question. I think then we should wrap up with lots and lots of questions. In this algorithm story, I was wondering how important it is that your monodromy singularities belong to the minimal class. Can one also have non minimal singularities, or is that inconsistent? It's a good question. Uh, I'm an elliptic right. vibration person. Point of view, these are very natural questions. So, so okay, I'm not familiar with what, what, uh, what, what, so, what. Minimality Paul, uh, means in yes. your Weierstrass model that the vanishing yes. orders of FG and the discriminant don't exceed 4, 6, 12 ah, along I the see. singular locus. So oh, the Kodaira classification that goes also into this Martone, Algeria's Martone story yes. relies very much on minimality in the sense that those vanishing orders are not exceeding 4, 6, 12. Right. It's maybe a question also for Friday. Yeah, but it's also, yeah. so one can, one can study, study such singularities, but if it's a scale invariant, and then you can, you can just assume it's a, it's a consistent effective theory, you can derive, you know, for example, the dimension of the Coulomb branch operator. And if it's, it's a base unitarity, like it's bigger than one, then, I mean, I suspect maybe it has tension with unitarity. Like what's going to be the scaling dimension of this uh, U parameter in that case? So I think the main issue is you can't really resolve this vibration. Uh, in ah, I see. Right I see. So it's like that sort of a, a nice uh, you know, genus one vibration. Yeah. Then would you say that uh, that's kind of like rank zero? Mm, I think. 
to blow up, for example, the base, and then you change, I think, the theory. Um, I don't I know. See. Maybe someone else has a comment about this. Okay, yeah, I should so also emphasize. Sorry, I should also emphasize that this bottom-up approach mm -hmm. uh, quickly run out of steam if you go beyond genus two. Genus two mm -hmm. is already difficult, or rank yes. two. Yeah. So the subordinate uh, subordinate curve, uh, the genus of subordinate curve is essentially given by the rank of the Coulomb branch, and the analysis of genus two. Some there's some recent paper from Philip and Arturis, I think partial results classification, and becomes much more complicated beyond genus two. Okay, so I think we should thank Yifan again, and um, so, yeah, thanks very much. Uh, just a note to everyone who's listening on YouTube or recording, we have a, a time zone catch up tomorrow morning, Eastern time at nine o'clock. And tomorrow, Fabio and Yifan switched. So I think Yifan comes first and then Fabio comes second. Just, it's all on the schedule, all right. So I think we should stop the recording.